Okay, turn the lights back on. Wow. Retro Electro Tech. When real audio ruled the world. world. Welcome back, all you groovy vintage audio hound dogs and pretty kitties. I'm Retro Ernest of Retro Electro Tech. And I wanted to cut back in for a brief uh, part two, going over the biasing procedure for this Marantz Model 4300 receiver. Now when I work on this stuff, I will typically make an initial pass to see where bias is sitting, uh, tweak things as needed, especially since I'm going to be testing the uh, DUT or device under test here off and on while I perform whatever work is needed. Now that being the case, I obviously don't want to see bias settings that are way out of whack. So um, I've gone through and performed a first pass um, adjustment and of course I also checked and tweaked the uh, DC offset. In other words, making sure there wasn't excessive DC voltage at the um, speaker terminals, which as a lot of you know, if present, can end up burning up the voice coils of your, uh, you know, prized speakers. But on this, the uh, DC level was fine, so we're good to go. Now even though I did a quick first pass, I'll go through the process with you on this um, one channel because it's pretty much just rinse and repeat otherwise on the other channel on the other side. So since you can utilize four channels on this unit in four channel mode of course, there are uh, two amps um, per heat sink, okay, and two sets of trimmer pots and each, you know, you can see the two trimmer pots there. and. Um, each one has a uh, bias adjustment and a DC offset adjust. And again, when in four channel mode, four individual amps are at work powering the four channels. And in two channel mode, uh, two channels are bridged. Now back to setting our bias and you know what's that all about in simple terms? Well, in the case of a class AB amp, you have um, transistor pairs working together to pass signal. In other words, getting the amplified music to your speakers in as clean and distortion-free of a manner as possible, I guess would be you know the way to put it, or one way to put it. So to do that as efficiently as possible, transistors need a bias voltage or current to keep them in a partially on or ready state, or a more technical way to say it would be their uh, quiescent operating state or Q point. So Think of a transistor pair working together to pass a sine wave as two relay runners, you know, in a relay race. As the wave goes positive, runner number one meets up with runner number two without any hesitation and passes the baton while both are in an obvious ready state and not standing completely idle with their hands down at their sides. They're obviously in motion when making the pass because if there was too much of a lag, it would cost them time. And in the case of, you know, that relay race, the penalty for lag time would be, you know, losing the race or could result in losing the race. And the penalty in a class AB transistor pair, when it comes to a time lag in handing, you know, handing off the signal is crossover distortion. Now, of course, that analogy you know, is for the purpose of painting a fairly basic picture of biasing and why we need to assure that uh, you know our biasing is within spec. Now for starters you notice here this connector okay with all of these posts on the bottom of the heat sink you know it's present on both heat sinks. I want to hook my uh, meter to um, post 11 my positive probe and my negative probe to uh, post number 9 now these posts here are sequenced, I guess, in um, odd order or odd intervals from left to right. We have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so forth, all the way to uh, 43. Okay, so let's get our probes in place. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Okay, let's get our positive probe on 11. And our negative on number 9, very carefully. And I'm working one-handed because I do have the unit powered up. And um, you know, be careful not to show, uh, you know, short on these um, posts as well. You know, it's fairly narrow spacing in there. So um, as I already mentioned too, you know, work one-handed because again, you know, it is powered on during this process, and you don't want to complete a path through your heart. 
Now the unit should be powered up as well for at least 15 minutes to a half hour or thereabouts, you know, before you set bias. And do so on this unit with the power mode switch on the rear uh, set to uh, four channel or times four in other words. And do not make the switch when the unit is powered on. That's very important. So now that we're connected to um, posts 11 to 9, as I pointed out just a moment ago, we'll adjust the uh, R739 uh, trimmer here. Okay, see right where I'm pointing? To achieve our 12 millivolts. So I'm going to swing the camera over to the meter. And this is the, again, trimmer pot that I will be adjusting for 12 millivolts DC. So as you can see on the meter here, well, it's bouncing between 11.7, 6, 7, whatever. Um, we're looking good, close enough, especially for a first pass. And um, now when I first spot checked the biasing, you know, on all the channels, uh, they were all quite a bit lower than specified, like within uh, six to eight-ish uh, millivolt range, right around there. So we're close enough to spec now, so you know, as I go through and perform the work I need to perform, you know, I feel good with things the way they are right now. And you know, when I finish everything up, as I mentioned earlier, I will go back and tweak everything one more time and uh, get everything a little bit more spot on, but even like this, it's fine. So anyways, let's go ahead and move on. What I'm gonna do now is um, move over to posts 33 for my positive probe and 35 for my negative, and I'm gonna adjust um, another trimmer, uh, R740, and I'll point all that out in just a minute once again so that we can achieve our 12 millivolts, um, which I'm sure we're gonna be close enough, but let's just go ahead and go through the mechanics of it. Okay, let's get hooked up to our next set of test points here. Let me get our positive on 33 here. Okay. Our negative probe on 35. Let me All right, we're looking good. And now that we're on uh, posts uh, 33 positive and 35 negative, our next trimmer adjustment is this one here, okay? And there's a slot on the on these sides here of the trimmers, okay? There's little slots for your uh, screwdriver there. And this is what we'd be adjusting, all right, to achieve our uh, 12 millivolts. And let me pound on over to the to the meter and here we are 11.8 so that's good I'm not even gonna tweak that like I said already I already did my first pass and got everything uh, close enough to where it needs to be I'll tweak it once again when I go through when everything is finished so that's really about it what I'm gonna do now is uh, get hooked up to the other posts that you're gonna wanna hook up to when you're adjusting your uh, DC offset and we'll kind of take a look at that. Now we're hook, hooking up to 13 positive. Okay. And 15 negative. Okay, so we're obviously hooked up to 13 and 15, as pointed out. And if needed, we would adjust um, R17, okay this trimmer here to get our reading as close to zero volts, volts as possible. All right, so um, let me zoom over to the meter. And as you can see, um, you know, it's pretty typical to see the uh, reading bouncing around within the low millivolts, so no big deal. We're looking good and uh, that's what we want. So let's move on. Okay, now we're gonna go 31 positive. And 29 negative. All right, so let's zoom back up to the top. Okay, and since we're all hooked up to 31 positive and 29 negative with our probes, 
Our adjustment is R722 right here. Okay, so this is what we would adjust for our uh, DC offset. So let me zoom back over to the meter. And again, guys, we're looking good, bouncing around in the low uh, millivolts, so I'm leaving this as is. I just went through the mechanics of this whole process. I went through that first pass. If I would have saw something that, you know, really drifted from the time I tweaked it last till now, I would have, of course, you know, done a little tweaking on camera. But everything was actually looking good, so I'm just leaving it. And like I said, when I get all the work finished, I'll go through and probably uh, do a little detail tweak one more time, but that's about it. So again, um, it's rinse and repeat for the other side. So now I'll end it here, and like I always say, peace, love, music, and the vintage audio that brings it to your ears. Till next time. This is a poor man's shoe production.